My apologies again. Uh, I didn't provide uh, papers or anything written, uh, but I uh, I tried to put again on a, a PowerPoint to be easier for for us to follow. Uh, so we are on this topic about gospel. What is the gospel? And uh, this is what we uh, were looking last um, last time. Um, 1 Corinthians 15.2. Let me read this passage first. By this gospel you are saved, if you hold firmly to the word I preach to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. And, um, yep. You are saved if you hold firmly to the word, to the word. So you've been in the past saved and now you have to hold. You hold on on this, on this teaching. All right, uh, just a brief, uh, I will shortly to remind you about what was uh, last time. The gospel is the good news. The gospel is the good news, a message from God uh, seen through the Bible, which concerns our relationship with God. And uh, the message always has to start with God. It starts with God, not with us or with our needs. It starts with him because everything in the gospel must glorify him and raise him above all in everything. That's the gospel. Gospel should bring uh, God uh, first. So it's very important to know him or make him known exactly as he is. It's so important to understand who God is. And uh, last time we determined that the right word to start describing him is the word holy. Uh, when we think about the holiness of God, we think that he is without sin. That's our uh, you know, first thought which comes in our mind is that he is without sin, without blame. Yeah? And that's true. But holy means also that he is perfect. He is perfect. And uh, God is perfect or holy. And everything what he is, um, he is or must be, uh, like you know, all the, the, his um, uh, qualities, uh, Attributes, sorry, attributes must be in perfect harmony. They have to be in perfect harmony. You see, uh, and we last uh, last time we uh, we had uh, quite an intense discussion, a bit of heated <laughs> discussion about God's love. You remember, we've been discussing about God's love, and the thing we want to understand clear about um, uh, God's love is that we don't deny God's love. I don't know if I gave that impression last time. We don't deny the God's love. It's in the Bible. Of course, we, we, we believe that. But this is uh, the, the only problem is that when we start our um, you know, evangelistic discussions, we always press and we start with this one. Why? Probably because we, our tendency is to start with something positive. We want to establish a bridge, and that's good. But the problem is uh, when we try to somehow to gain not only the attention, but we want a response, a positive response from the other side. So we will start with something we think is positive and we'll get through to their hearts. And that's why we tend to start with uh, this attribute of, uh, you know, God is love. And uh, we add, you know, the same, uh, we, we know, this, we know uh, the, the, those steps, uh, God is love, and He has a wonderful plan with you. And then, and in in a way, we try to somehow to determine in the other person to receive. But we remember, and you remember, that our task is not to make people to receive the gospel. Our primary task is to share, to proclaim the gospel. It's in God's hands. It's His actually. It's His duty to make that change in in God's. The, 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 um, the gospel has the power in itself. We don't need to add anything or to make it somehow to like appealing, you know, people to receive it. Um, we have to be faithful. Sorry. Yes, yes, of course. Anyway, we, we are recording it on. Um, yeah. Um, <coughs> so. 
Yeah, you see, that's why the right way to present God is Him being just. And we can trust Him because He is just. We, we start with justice and um, we present Him, He is just, and that's why we must, or we are um, uh, building, or we, we have that faith, we, we have that trust in Him when we think He is just. And I gave that example, if you remember, about the family or someone who is a criminal, you know, breaking into your house. And uh, y let's think about a, a illustration like this. And someone is killing someone of your family. So at another trial, you know, there is a judge, and he will uh, say, well, it's just, it's just for him to be, you know, to be punished. But because I'm a loving just, uh, you know, judge, I will, I will let him go. I will forgive him. You see, um, any of, uh, of our um, sins, all our sins must be punished. You see, the justice requires the punishment. So we, we have to keep that in balance. Otherwise, the love of that judge, the love of God, if the justice is not, you know, satisfied, that love is not a just love. And when you have someone, when you have to deal with someone who is not a just, you know, uh, person, though he loves, you can't trust him. Uh, I'll give um, an example, something, it's something similar with my children. <laughs> Sometimes I remember when I, uh, if I'm a father and I'm a, an earthly father, <laughs> I do mistakes, probably you, you didn't do mistakes, but I do mistakes. <laughs> um, I do mistakes and sometimes the, uh, what I, I'm tend, I'm, I tend to do is to uh, be, you know, bias, you know, to give, uh, like, uh, you know, to punish one of my children and when it comes to those youngers, you know, uh, I, my tendency is to, like, you know, not to do or to treat them the same. So it's not fair. And they will always say, well, it's not fair. It's not fair. <laughs> okay, so there is a balance we have to keep in. And this makes actually the love of God to be the real love. The real love. If we understand the love of God in this way. If we understand the God's love in this way, that's actually the most uh, important thing. And it's uh, it helps to build I trust in, in God. Um, he is not, you see, he is not overwhelmed by feelings as we tend to do <laughs> and, uh, you know, feelings of love because his love is always just. That's, uh, that's what we need to keep in mind. Now, 1 Corinthians um, uh, 15, 2. Um, a gospel is for our salvation. By this gospel, you are saved. But also, if you hold firmly to the word, uh, that means a process from that moment on. And the gospel also is for our sanctification. Now, what is this word sanctification? It's about being holy or holiness. Sanctification means holiness. We are made holy. So first, let me just uh, make um, um, a remark here. Uh, we are made holy. And what that what does not mean to be, you know, uh, when we say we are not, uh, we are made holy, does not mean that from now on we are perfect and we will not sin anymore. This doesn't, you know, that doesn't mean that we will not sin anymore when we've been made holy. Yes, we are not perfect yet. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me, let me put it in, in a larger picture about when we speak about the gospel so we have all the journey you know all journey uh, our journey to heaven actually in acts we find we find our journey or um, the, the the life or the the way of uh, life of a believer it's it's uh, it is called the way the believers sorry i lost my words <laughs> uh where when it was uh, related about Saul, he was persecuted those who were on the way. Okay, so this is the way. Well, it, the similar, when we think about our way to heaven, our journey to heaven, we think about one moment when we started, and then we are continuing, in, and there is a final destination. So if we look through these steps, our first moment when we've been um, you know, introduced into the God's kingdom. 
was the moment when, when we've been justified, when we believed in God, when we believed. He justified us. And that means in, relate, in relation with sin that we've been delivered from the penalty of sin. So the moment when we've been justified, it, it has to do most with the, you know, this side of um, uh, judicial you know, side. It's we've been delivered from the penalty. We are not under uh, the penalty of the sin. And God is not keeping us guilty for that. But there's not finished there. You know, we are looking uh, towards uh, the, the end, and the end will be there in heaven when we'll be glorified, and the glorification will be the moment of glorification when we will uh, know, uh, uh, you know, when we will be delivered from the presence of sin. But in between, in this moment, when we are here, we are actually to fight, and we are to... Um, apply what we've been made what we've been made um, r- we've been regenerated we've b- been given a new nature but we have now to work out what we've been uh, you know what the transformation we have inside to work out and to present it outside or to to make it visible on outside and this process it's called sanctification when we are delivered from the power of sin we will talk a bit uh, uh, longer a bit more about that but um, just to have this picture in mind Um, (coughs) it's usually uh, been uh, mentioned about three phases or three aspects of sanctification. When we speak about sanctification, um, we think about these these three steps of past, present, and future. And uh, when we speak about the aspect of sanctification, of the holiness of uh, in, you know, past, it's, we speak about positional sanctification, what that means. Well, we've been uh, placed in, in, uh, in Christ, and we will, uh, uh, see uh, about this a bit more, but uh, the the second one is present. Uh, in now we are in progressive sanctification. We are not. We are saints. We are made to be saints, but in the same time we are working on our uh, holiness. So it's something we work every day. Also, we are looking toward for the perfect sanctification and. That is uh, somehow um, the same with the glorification. All right. Positional sanctification, Ephesians 1, chapter, uh, chapter 1, verse 4. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. You see, we been uh, we were chose in him. In him, that's the place. First Corinthians six eleven, and that is what some of you were, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. You were sanctified. First Peter chapter two nine uh, and ten. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Now, why is so important to understand our positional sanctification? You see, when we read the Bible, the New Testament, uh, we find many times about... uh, uh, us being in Christ, but also Christ is in us. It's a fully picture of how we are, how is our relationship, you know, um, uh, coming together with Christ. So we are in him. That's the place we are in him, and he is in us. First, uh, Second Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation is, has come. The old has gone. The new is here. Now, I think 
right from the beginning, the premise or the foundation of sanctification teaches us well, that we are not two people. We are not two people. That's the most important to, to understand right from the beginning. We are not an old man and a new man living side by side. <laughs> or we are not two natures fighting each other. I remember um, the old times when um, I think it was my first, you know, uh, uh, time on, on um, we say, catechese. What's the, what is the word for English? When catechism, yeah. And I, I remember at one point we were given that illustration of uh, two dogs. <laughs> it depends on which dog you are feeding. So if you are feeding, you know, the, the old nature, you know, that black and the uh, uh, bad dog, then that is more, uh, you know, powerful in your life or if you are feeding your new nature the the white dog <laughs> so you will you will uh, win the you know that battle if you are uh, it depends but you, you see it's the wrong picture we don't have those two natures in the same time fighting each other we are not both in adam and in christ you see because we are a new creation we are a new creation the old has passed away it has been crucified and it is dead. <laughs> it is dead. This is our identity. You see? This is our identity. We are a new creation. We have a new identity in Christ now. Now, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 to 11 says, Or do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who have sex with men, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And that is what some of you were. But you were washed. You were sanctified. You were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. You see, you were. <laughs> we, we've been in one of those categories. We, we fitted in one of those categories somewhere. But we were. Now, what happened with us? We've been washed and we are sanctified. The only way we will ever enter the kingdom of heaven is whatever we were, we are no longer. <laughs> no one who was truly regenerated will say, well, I'm a saved thief, for example. <laughs> I'm a saved thief. So I'm, I'm still a thief, but I'm a saved one. <laughs> no. <laughs> it, the old is gone, or a saved adulterer. And it's sad that today uh, is not, I think we are so, and, and in churches probably more are so focused and they would like to speak about justification. And this is the side we would like to, you know, to have a savior to have a savior, to, to solve the issue with the, our uh, sin in this way, but not to deal with the sin daily in our life and not speaking so much about sanctification. That's why we have our, you know, the tendency in the churches today s being so damaged, so, you know, devastated by the sin because they think, you know, it's the, the way you can get over or you are pleased to God is to have that, you know, um, prayer and to be right with God from the beginning and then to live as you want to live and not to, to, but we forget about that we are a new nature and our new nature, you know, excludes everything what was old and uh, we can't be those we were. Why will we still sin then? That's an interesting question. Well, that's a great disappointment. The last, the um, second day after I was, uh, you know, I, I believed in God and I, I, I started my journey with God, <laughs> I realized though I am so well intended and I, I'm, I so uh, uh, eagerly want to please Him, I still sin. And I remember. Uh, at that time, my family, my parents, they, they weren't uh, believers at that moment. And after a few days, my father, because he knew when, was, when, when that moment happened, 
when I started the journey with God, uh, they time to time they, uh, you know, they were asking or were they telling me, well, you're still sinning, <laughs> you're still doing the same, you know, bad things, and I tried hard and I was so disappointed. You see, why we still uh, sin, and um, we still sin because we live in an under unredeemed flesh. We haven't got our new bodies yet. <laughs> And we have vestiges of the fallen nature in our minds and in our um, faculties. So it, it they are coming again and again. Um, we have a, an expression, din inertia, from inertia. It's, it's something you, you did for a long, long time. And, and, you know, the first reaction when someone is, uh, uh, you know, uh, upsetting you <laughs> is to go back and fight, you know, uh, given an answer which will, you know, hurt the other one. So it's, it's something you, you had in your way to, to be before, though immediately you realize, or in that moment you can realize what you do, and you are, uh, you are sorry for that, and you go back and you solve that issue with God. What sanctification actually is? Galatians 4, 9. My dear children, for whom I am again in the pains of childbirth until Christ is formed in you. And now, uh, here, Paul is giving that vivid picture of, <laughs> a, of a woman in, in um, labor. You know, uh, I've seen all my six children <laughs> when they were born. And is you know, something, when you read this passage, you think, well, it's something interesting. Why is uh, Paul, you know, bringing this example? Well, first, that we are given here the goal of our sanctification. What is the goal of our sanctification? The goal is we to become like Christ. We to become like Christ. And um, if until now we spoke, you know, and we had all this... Uh, probably we would say, well, a lot of theory, <laughs> things which are good, I it's good to follow. But from now on, from now on, things are getting more interesting because it will actually tackle all our uh, struggles, daily struggles with uh, our Lord and uh, w in our f uh, journey of faith. And we will uh, tackle all those things, all the those areas where the holiness <laughs> is in progress. And it's so interesting to see how Christ actually has to take um, uh, his image to, to be more, more of Christ in your life, more of Christ in your life. Well, I will stop here because um, there is more to be said about progressive sanctification. And uh, uh, the progressive sanctification, I will start with Philippians 2, <laughs> where we are called to work out our salvation you see um, someone said well a, a teacher of the bible said that um, salvation we find salvation in the bible on all those three tenses past present and future you see we we can't say that we well we are saved we are saved now <laughs> we said we've been saved the moment when we believed but we still be in the process to be saved. So all these have to be taken in, in account. Why? Because we are in the process of this journey when we are walking with God and a lot of things are to come and to be shared about our um, sanctification. So I'll stop here. If there is anything to be added to comment, um, yeah, that's our time.